guys, Zach in here, and in today's video, heavily requested, I am excited to share it with you guys today. I'm going to show you in this stream how to get your offer price in under two minutes or less with my instant offer formula. I'm super excited. Guys, if you are sick of doing all this complicated stuff, right? So I, I think so many people get so complicated, right? That they try to find the ARV perfectly. They try to get the perfect MAO formula. They, they try to do a transgressional uh, analysis uh, on seven properties. And then they look up everything to, to the year built. And they, they spend hours trying to comp a property. When you guys see me in under four or five minutes talking to sellers, give offers that are $40,000, $50,000 below the MAO all day, every day. And what I want to do is really share what I, what I have in my brain of how I can process really fast what a property is more or less worth, lowball from there, and really give everybody a simple instant offer formula so you can stop complicating this business, guys. These broke gurus complicate this business on purpose, try to confuse you, and then try to sell you the solution on a course. When in all honestly, in, in, honestly, in the sales process, the wholesaling real estate process, the comping, the offer, the cash buyers, it's a simple process, guys and gals. You're trying to buy somebody's property cash and then sell the contract for a profit. That, that's how we wholesale real estate. That is what wholesaling is. And this is why in today's video, I'm going to break down exactly my step-by-step -step process so you can dominate your offers in wholesaling real estate. And most importantly, so you can get more money, become less complicated, and just, hey, Make your life a lot easier, guys. That is the point in this business, and that's the point today. I want to share with you exactly how to do this the right way. So I'm super excited. I'm jacked up. I'm going to change some lives today and hopefully get people to stop complicating this business and start giving them to start lowballing, give great offers, and make a ton of money in this business. But before we get into it, do me a favor. Smash that like button. Hit that subscribe button. Comp below your questions, guys. I'm super pumped up. I'm super excited. I, I'm jacked up, guys, because I know lives will be changed today. I, I know for a fact because so many beginners, they listen to these gurus that really complicate everything. They, they make it seem so difficult because you got to buy my course, my mentorship to get it, guys. No, this is the mentorship. You're in it right now, okay? We're going to learn it all today right now, absolutely for free. So let's get it going. Guys, if you're ready to go, if you're, you're excited, if you want to get your butt out of bed and get it going, y'all already know what time it is. Y'all already know what's got to happen. So without further ado, get out of bed. Let's go. It's wholesaling time, baby. Woo! Get the fuck out of bed, bitch. Go. Wake up, bitch, get up. Get up, get up, get up. Get up. excited guys i'm ready to go i'm ready to share with you exactly my offer formula instantly so it makes it really easy for you and obviously just letting everybody know that we're going to make wholesaling real estate easy simple so you can actually go out here start making offers today all right that's the point that's what i want to do and that's what i'm excited to share with you guys so uh let's get in let's get it going guys let's really break down everything let's really share everything you need to know and uh let's break this all down so without further ado Let's get it going. So I want everybody to understand this one sentence. And this is going to be a pinnacle part of what I'm talking about today. But stop sweating the offer amount. I want everybody to say this to yourself and say it very, very slowly. Stop sweating the offer 
amount. So many of you guys and gals out here are sweating how much you're offering your motivated sellers. You are sweating the amount that you have to give out or the perfect offer. It's got to be, everything's got to be perfect and immaculate and the best. And that's not the truth. You should not be sweating how much you're offering the motivated seller. Like the guys, I don't sweat when I make an offer because I know if the seller takes that offer, I'm gonna make a ton of money. Okay. I sweat maybe some of the negotiations on that and, and what I might have to do ar around there. But really, I, I don't sweat when I offer a seller. And you should not be sweating the offer amount either because once you sweat the offer amount, that's when you get destroyed in this business. Th that is when things do not go very well for you. And what you should sweat about though is the motivation. So stop sweating the offer amount and start sweating over the motivation of the seller. I get worried when I talk to a lead and I don't really see much motivation. That's what gets me sweaty. That's what gets me nervous. Cause I'm like, Oh shoot. Are they motivated? Are they not motivated? This is, oh no. They need to be motivated. That is what you should be sweating over guys. Because if a seller, it doesn't matter. Like I just want everybody to understand the only way we can get really good deals is when the seller has motivation. Motivation on the property, which is ugly, or motivation with the seller in their situation of wanting to get rid of the property for cash. Those are the two ways to get really good deals. So either they sweat the offer amount, which you should not do, or you should start sweating the motivation of the, of the seller, right? Nobody ever talks about this. Every single person on YouTube talks about how you have to go out here and be the, this crazy closer type person. And a lot of you guys and gals out here are selling peanut butter to people that are deathly allergic to peanut butter. It's like, it, it makes no sense. I want to sell peanut butter to people that love Reese's peanut butter cups. They probably like peanut butter, right? That, that seems like a good deal. So I'm not going to give offers to people that aren't motivated. That, that really makes no sense to me. All right. We got the world cup coming up. If, why would I try to sell a NFL ticket package to somebody in France that loves uh, soccer or the way they call it the world cup football, right? Why would I do that? That makes no sense. Maybe I can sell maybe, uh, I don't know if they live in Paris, a uh, PSG season, like uh, like a team in France. Why well, don't sell that, right? So it's like, guys, you're not going to sell snow cone. Like, so it's like a snow cone, right? So if I'm in Colorado in the mountains, selling ice cream to someone like that, that's really cold. It's probably not going to do as well as if I try to sell hot chocolate, right? It's just, it, it's about the motivation, right? I'm more motivated to have a hot chocolate when it's cold than having an ice cream when it's cold, right? It's just those simple things. So, so many people are like, oh, I got to make sure the ice cream is the best price possible. Why? Why don't you just overcharge for hot chocolate? People are going to buy it. They're cold. Same thing. If I charge $2 for a cold water in Florida in the summer, I'm probably, the motivation's high, okay? They're willing to take the low ball, which is a high price on the water bottle because there's a ton of motivation. Now, if there is, you know, a 7-Eleven across the street, it's probably not going to do too well, right? The motivation's down for wanting a water right there. There's a water fountain right there. It's more about the motivation than the offer price. And I think so many people get this really confused in wholesaling real estate. And I want everybody to understand this too. You are not going to be perfect. I'm not perfect. Nobody is perfect. We are human beings, okay? We are not perfect. You, when you give offers out, you will mess up. You will probably fail. I fail all the time. I have no problem with that. Winners fail. But the winners from the failure, what they do from there, that's how they become very successful. So I want everybody understanding this, watching this today, that focus on the motivation. But before I give them the offer, because everyone's going to use this for like non-motivated sellers. You guys, this has to be for motivated sellers, people that want to sell the property, people that want to get rid of the property for cash. This is what we need to focus on. So that being said, we understand this. What is my offer formula? What is my process? What is this? My process simply is to simplify your process, increase profits. So let's get into the offer formula. So I just want everybody to understand this. The process I'm about to give to you is super simple. Because once you simplify things, you actually make more money. Once you simplify, I, once I start simplifying my wholesaling real estate process, my acquisitions, my marketing, my dispo processes, once I simplified it, it made it more about the people than the actual process itself. Once you care more about the seller and their situation than the offer, your profits are going to increase because this is a people's business. 
So many people think it's not a people's business. It, it's a people business, okay? We are writing contracts with people, not robots. We're not buying stocks. St stocks are b basically bought from a robot trading you know, thing algorithm. Like we're going on an exchange and buying it and the, the numbers aren't emotional, right? People are emotional when writing the contracts. And I want everybody to understand that once you simplify your process, you'll increase your profit. So let me ask you a question. This is the number one question you have to ask yourself when you give an offer price. Do you know your seller's bottom line price when you go meet with the seller? You never spoke about price at all. Do you know the seller's bottom line price, the least they would take on the deal? I want everybody in the comments to, to ask, say, I, I know, or say you don't know. Do you or do you not? When you meet with the seller, can you meet, read their mind and see what the lowest they're going to be on the house? I would love to know because if somebody can, I, I would love to have a great insight on how to read minds because I definitely like to use that. But I want everybody to understand. Do you know the seller's bottom line price? If you never mentioned price before, you cold call a seller and say, when they sell their house, do you know what the lease they're going to take for it? No. You do not know. We, we cannot read minds here. That, that is not what we do. We do not read minds. Okay, I hope everybody understands this. We cannot read people's minds. We are not mind readers. Okay, we, we, can, get a, we can get into a mysticism uh, live stream another day. But this, this is not. This is for wholesaling, okay? And I love this question. I love this one. If you seriously think the bottom line price a seller's willing to take on a deal is this estimate, you are grossly mistaken. You are grossly mistaken. Because they would have gone with the realtor, tried to list it for that price, and not gotten that price. Their bottom line is never this estimate. Why do I go on my live streams, close sellers for 50, 60, 70, 80, even $100,000 below this estimate? Their bottom line is never this estimate, right? You don't know. They could sell for 50K under what the thing's worth. They could want to sell for 5K under. Everybody's different. And based on their motivation, they're most likely, most likely going to want to get a lower price. So this is why motivation is going to be the most important thing for us guys and gals out here. You need to know, you don't know what your seller's bottom line price is. So that being said, no, we do not know. So now we know that we understand that we have no idea. Okay. But we do have an idea of one thing though. And this is where we have a lot of leverage in our negotiations, in our conversations with motivated sellers. This is where we get a lot of leverage for getting the best deals possible. This is where we make our money in wholesaling real estate. And this is what we can focus on. So focusing number one on motivation, but number two, since I don't know at all what the seller's bottom line price is, I can know one thing though. I know how much a cash buyers should more or less buy the property at, right? So I want everybody to, I want to ask everybody a, a simple question. If you know for a fact on a, Let's do an example here. If a cash buyer is willing to buy a real estate deal at a hundred thousand dollars, would would anything really affect what the offer you're going to get? If you know the cash buyer is willing to buy it at a hundred thousand dollars, what price would you offer to the person? I want everybody to know because this is always an interesting one. I get a wide array of people when they're offers. Oh, I'd offer him 90. Oh, I'd offer him 50. I'd offer him 10. I'd offer him 20. I'd offer him 90. I'd offer him 97. I, I'm generally curious what the people here think because I want to see how different it is from my offer formula. I'm, I'm interested in what people's uh, offer formulas are. They, they, they go to freeholcing.com. They get the free content. They, they know how all this stuff works. But I'm genuinely curious what people think of that and why people are writing down in the comments. I, I'm not looking at the comments yet. I'm excited to see it. I want everybody to understand this because this is a mindset shift when it comes to giving offers for everybody. If you know your cash buyer is going to buy this deal at a hundred thousand dollars, does it matter how much they own the property? Does that change anything? Truthfully. So if the seller owes $60,000 on the property, is that going to change my offer price? If the seller owes a hundred thousand on it, is that going to affect my offer price? No. I hope you know 
whatever situation the seller has, their motivation, tenants, any, whatever happens to the house, the fact that a cash buyer will buy it at $100,000, it doesn't matter. I do not care that your Aunt Shirley has sentimental value on the property. It's worth $100,000. Like I used an example yesterday, if somebody's looking to sell a handbag for five bucks, I don't care that you had the handbag for 10 years. I care about what the thing's worth. That being said, we, we know that since the thing's worth 100000 what offer would give? Let's see what the comments. Uh, I'm, I'm very curious. We're getting 90 on it. Okay. 85, 60, 110, 80, 85, 70, sell for 80. See, that's decent, right? Because you'll make 10K profit. So no, you'll sell for 100. If a cash buyer's want to buy it for 100, they'll buy it for 100. So if you're looking for 70, you'll make 30, right? 55, 85, because that's 15K profit, 70, 50, 90, 50, 85, 40, 70, 70, 50, 80, 90, right? Like we're getting all these. Here's the thing. That seller in this example, their bottom line price was 60, okay? We're using this for an example. That means higher grounds REI lost out on $20,000 on profit there. Young to real lost out on what 30 grand in additional profit, right? Milton lost 10 grand. OPM probably would do fine. That's Omar would have lost money. Janine would have made the same amount. Akil would have lost money. I'm looking at 10 grand, you'd lose 25 grand, right? Here's the thing 80. The person that probably done the what right is Young Diesel here because Young Diesel would be 50. They would say 80. They'd meet in the middle and probably get 65, 60. I want you guys to know because you did not know. This is why I asked you. Do you know the seller's bottom line price? You don't. So you guys have tried to offer guessing what their bottom line price was. I literally asked you this question. What's the seller's bottom? You don't know. But now you tried guessing with the cash buyer. Here's the thing we don't know, but we can generally go and just lowball from there and see what it's going to be. Now I'm not telling you to offer 40, you know, 50s pushing it right, but it. I want everybody to understand. What if the cash buyer is willing to buy it for 110,000, 190, right? Like, does that shift it a little? Yeah, it does shift it. But I want everybody to understand that the offer you give. It doesn't matter. We don't know what the seller's price is going to be. So we just got to give it, right? But that being said, if we knew the seller was going to take 60 for it, a lot of you guys out here offering 70, probably be at 85, you just lost out on 20, 30 grand. And based on the motivation, that's how we get it from there. And I want everybody to understand that. You have to lowball in this business. So let's break down the formula. It just That being said, we're playing some mind games on you. I'm going to give everybody a general instant offer formula, okay? Now, see, most sellers won't take 60. I'm just being honest with you. Like, that, that was an example just to show that we don't know anything. But let, let, let me help you out here, okay? My instant offer formula, step one, you're going to comp and find A or V two minutes tops. I, I only get it, it. It is a blitz estimate, all right? You can comp and find ARV probably on ZillowRealtor.com, whatever service you want to do in a disclosure state. Two minutes. Two minutes. All right? Two minutes. That's all you stinking have. You got prop stream batch. That makes it easier, I guess. But you don't really need that stuff, right? Starting out as a beginner. ARV and comping, two minutes. That's all I'm giving you. I'm giving you two minutes. Two stinking minutes. Because how do you find an offer price in two minutes? Oh no, what are we going to do? This is how it works. You only hit two minutes to guess it. And this is because so many people spend 30, 40, 50 minutes and they do 10 properties and it's the entire day. With here, we're going to create a blitz estimate MAO. All right. Y'all love, I love football. You see how the blitz works. You just got to go after it, right? Here's the thing. Once I find what my ARV is and my repair costs more or less, then we can go from there and, and sort of figure it all out, right? I think so many people really overcomplicate this business and they really think that wholesaling real estate is this crazy 
difficult, insane process. But uh, really, when it comes to finding ARV, repair costs, things like that, it's actually not that complicated, right? So what I want to do here is kind of share with you how to find repair costs too in this to make it easier. But we find the ARV. So how am I going to find the ARV? Honestly, if I look at a property and I see three comparables the past four, five, three, four months, I'm just going to use that, get a quick estimation of the square foot, multiply it, and then just get like a general range. Your general range should be good enough. Like, like guys, we're lowballing on this. So like, we're not going to focus too much on it. All right. Like we're, we're not really going crazy on it. And what we're going to do is just do the offer formula I have at freelancing.com. So we're going to find ARV minus repairs and multiply it by a percentage point. So how do I find repair costs guys? Because we only have two minutes, we're just going to do the free wholesaling.com repair cost worksheet. So this is the free wholesaling.com repair cost worksheet. Pretty simple, right? Pretty easy, not complicated, not stressful. This is little, I literally guys, I am in free wholesaling.com right here. Okay. I am in free wholesaling.com and right here we have our worksheet. Okay. We got a lot of really good graphics in free wholesaling.com guys. It's free. It's a free wholesaling course. But I look here, this is going to be more or less a repair cost worksheet and don't screenshot. It's all at freelancing.com. So don't worry about that. Right. But that is pretty much it. So like, I mean, take a screenshot if you really need to, if you're being a rebel, you don't like freelancing.com, but first of all, what's wrong with you? If you don't, but that's basically the repair cost worksheet. It's not that complicated based on the square foot of the house. If it needs light, medium, heavy, It'd take you maybe 15, 20, 30 seconds to figure out if you're light, medium, heavy. You'll know heavy. Okay. You'll know heavy, heavy. Mediums where most properties are at if it's ugly. And then light is, it's not that bad, but it still needs something, right? And so just more or less, this is what our formula is going to be from there. So that being said, we know that guys, go to freelancing.com. Just want everybody to know that. That's how we figure it out. So that being said here, we really got to figure out what our MAO is. We, we just spent two minutes. Oh my gosh, time's ticking. What am I going to do? We're going to use this formula and that's all we're going to do. So what's the formula, right? Depending on your ARV, your after repair value, if your ARV is over, sorry, under $120,000, it's ARV minus repairs times 70%. And if anybody says my, oh, my guru says this. Oh, my mentor says that. I, I don't care. I don't care what your broke guru got to say. All right. I don't care. They broke. So I don't care. <laughs> ARV minus repairs times 70% equals all deals ARV under 120. Do that. That's going to be your MAO. 120 to 200, 80%, I would say here. And then from ARV mass repairs, I'd multiply it by 83% if it's 200 to 300 ARV. Now, I want you guys to understand ARVs. Don't use ARVs from a year ago till now because property values have gone down. If you do that, you're not going to do well. Just want everybody to understand that. 350 plus probably 85%. Okay. That is what we're going to do. And we're going to use that repair chart. We're going to guess it. We're, we're not going to get too complicated on this, right? I think so many wholesalers, they get super complicated in this business. And honestly, that's not it. What I can tell you though, especially when it comes to repair charts and um, going out and figure out, you, you just don't complicate it. I'm telling you, most of you guys complicate this business and it doesn't do well. And so what is the instant offer? From, what is the special secret sauce I've been building up to in this entire video? What is it? Let me share it right now. This is going to blow your mind. We figure out what the MAO is, but how much are you going to offer, right? What's my offer? Just offer 30% off the MAO. And this is very general, but we need in two minutes, we got to give an offer out there. Just do 30% off the max allowable offer. When everybody listen to me one more time, 30% off the max allowable offer. So if I have an MAO of $100,000, my initial offer should be 70. And this is, you can do lower if you want, right? 60, fit, but this is just a suggestion because when you get a higher MAOs, that's when it gets a little squirrely. So if your MAO, maybe... 35, 40% if the ARV is under 120 maybe, but like really it's, it's all a guessing game because most sellers are going to take that, but that's okay. We're just lowballing, right? If our MAO is $250,000, then our offer should be 175. 
And that's a very, 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 very low ball offer. But we, I can you all, I have to use a one size fit all approach on this. So that is going to be the best one size fit all approach for everybody. I want everybody to understand this is not a 70% rule. Okay. It, it's none of this. You just got to go out here and give offers. This is what this business is about. You just got to give offers. You miss 100% of the shots you, you never take. Wayne Gretzky, Michael Scott. So I want everybody to understand that. You have to just give offers. The more offers you give, the better chance you're going to get them accepted. But offering the right way, again, that's why I go to fearlessing.com because how you offer is more important than what you offer. And I want everybody to really understand that. How you present your offer with your confidence, your authority, is going to be way more important than the numbers you, you do. Because if you do not have any confidence in your offer, you're, you're not going to do well in this business. You have to have confidence when talking to these motivated sellers. You have to have authority when talking to motivated sellers. And you have to have the utmost confidence when you're giving that lowball offer out there. And you got to do it the right way, right? So we'll break that all down too today. But I want people to understand that Y'all are just complicating the offer process. You guys are making it super difficult for you. You're making it super difficult for your motivated sellers. Confidence and authority. Uh, Angelica's got it right. Confidence and authority. That's it. Don't complicate it. So when everybody comes up to me and they get so stressed out over what to offer, it, I don't care. Okay, this is what it should be. I think so many wholesalers, this is when they, they get destroyed doing it, right? They think, oh, but what about this? What about this? Did I stutter? Did I stutter? No, no, I didn't stutter. Okay. I said it the right way. That is what I said. So that is how you, or you're supposed to do it. It drives me crazy when people don't do it. Guys, I want everybody to understand this. This is a cold, hard fact about wholesaling real estate. These offers will most likely be rejected. But the point here is we can negotiate it up and make really good spreads. You make more money lowballing than by not lowballing. And not because the lowballs are always accepted, but because when you negotiate, you end up getting a better price. So let me explain. If we have two ends of a spectrum on price of a negotiation, right? So let's say the thing is worth $1,000. If I initially offer 100, a super lowball, but most people offer 300, and this one guy's at a, at 2000 if i meet in the middle so if i'm at this price and the other person's at this price and we meet the middle wait for this and we meet in the middle we get like here but if i'm over here and they're there and we meet at the middle we meet at the middle like right here which means the price is actually by lowballing i actually get a lower price so let's do an example like this so if i lowball here and we meet in the middle we're at like this but if I lowball from here and we meet in the middle, we're at like we're at like that, which means we just made that much more spread because they lowballed more. A lot of sellers sometimes make decisions based on a logic, and meet in the middle is the most logical thing anybody can do. That is how you become very successful. I think so many people really get confused on this, and I just want to understand this. Your offer is most likely going to get rejected, but how you offer is going to determine your success. When it comes to offering these lowball deals and these lowball offers, so you get the best deal possible. What's the worst case scenario? Whenever, what if I can't find comps? Oh my gosh, I'm screwed. This is the worst thing in the world. I get that all the time. Let's go after our doomsday scenario. Worst thing in the world. All right. You're just going to ask the cash buyer how much they're willing to buy the house for. And that, that's worst case scenario. So y'all should have your buyers ready. But hey, Mr. Cello, how much are you willing to buy the property for? Then lowball from there. That's really it. That's really it. So the next question, which I didn't really even have to go over today, but I do want to just kind of recap it for everybody here is, okay, Zach, you're talking a big game, how to find the offer price, but how do I give it, right? Because you keep talking about it and people get uh, worked up over it. So I, I will explain again, which y'all should just go to freelancing.com. That's where I teach it all. But I'll, I'll just show you the, the basic four methods of giving the right lowball, right? There's the price first method, which basically we just ask the seller how much they're willing to sell it for. And then we counter with the, with the lowball, right? Dollar bill method. So if somebody says, oh, Zach, I have no idea how much you want to sell the property for. I kind of counter up with like, <laughs> I mean, would you take a dollar for the property? No. 
Two dollars? No. Three? No. Four? No. Why, why are you offering me four bucks for the house? Well, you said never had a price, so I'm guessing we just buy. I buy this thing for four bucks right now. No, I'm at this price. Boom, go from there, right? And then counter from there. Good cop, bad cop is my favorite one. So it's basically, hey, Mr. Seller, I was talking to my partner, Rick, and he was really more or less at like 60,000 on this house. Get the reaction, negotiate from there, works really well. Rick, Rick really loves the volley method. So basically the volley method is the method for actually going out here, talking to a motivated seller. Be like, how much you looking to sell the house for? I have no idea. Well, if you didn't know what it would be, and you kind of volley it like a volleyball back and forth, about four or five times, you, you kind of ask it in a different way, uh, sort of like an interrogation, if that made sense. Uh, if, if you do it like an interrogation, uh, things sort of change and it actually works pretty well. So uh, that is pretty much how you give an offer in under two minutes. Uh, I want people to understand that once you actually go out here and talk to a motivated seller, the more conversations you have with motivated sellers, the more money you're going to make. The more offers you make, the more money you're going to make. The more you market, the more you're going to make. The more cash buyers you get, the more you're going to make. Volume in this business is great, but quality and quantity uh, is a, it's, it's sort of an everlasting uh, mix of things. So what I want to do is answer some questions we got on what I just said. And I want to do some one-on-one -on -one calls, talk to the people in wholesaling real estate and really get their opinions on what's going on and uh, seeing what's up. So without further ado, let's break it down, guys. Make sure you go to freewholesaling.com. That is my free real estate wholesaling course where I teach wholesaling stinking real estate absolutely for free. And I just share with everybody how they can get rich with the power of wholesaling. So without further ado, freehostling.com in the bottom. And uh, let's answer some questions from there. So how far do you go up at a time from your original offer? Where, whatever I can. So that's always a very interesting question, uh, Marion. It's like, how much are you willing to take on a deal? And that's really the question, right? If I'm going to take a $5,000 assignment fee versus a no assignment fee or no deal. I'd take the five grand. Now I'd rather get 50 grand, but if you can't get 50 grand, whatever, right? I've done thousand dollar deals, right? So I'll take any, anything I really can. So how high do you go up? As long as there's profit in it, I'm good to go. I don't like making a thousand dollars on a deal. Sometimes if I know that they, I could probably follow up with them a little more and get a better price, I will. Uh, but you no, know, if the motivation's good, I, I try to make as much as I can on it. But I don't get greedy, guys. Once you get greedy in this business, that's when you get slaughtered, right? You do not want to lose out in this business. Let's see. Teresa said, I did this with the cash buyer. He wanted the address and ghosted me after. Cash buyer gets upset if you don't give them the address. He wanted the address and he goes to the cash buyer gets upset if you don't give them the address, but it's a gamble if they steal it. Teresa, you literally, that is a terrible mindset. If you probably didn't qualify the seller, you didn't call them. Because that's usually what happens. So, Teresa, honestly, hop on the stream. We can talk. But if you don't have a qualified seller, of course they're going to ghost you. If you have a qualified qualified seller, you call them, follow up. You don't have that problem. Uh, that, that is not a good mindset to have. Joe says, "What if you can't sell the deal? If you can't sell the deal, it comes down to two main reasons. Number reason number one, you got it under contract for too high. And number two, you haven't talked to enough cash buyers." So don't ever say that. I, I'm changing everybody's mindset. It is not that I can't sell a deal. It's I haven't talked to enough sellers or I had it under contract for too high. I'll tell you, if you're in the middle of, in the rural nowhere and you get a property under contract for 500 bucks and it can rent out for a thousand, I will buy it personally, okay? So there's always a price. If it can rent out for it, there's demand, it's good to go. I think so many wholesalers get really, can. Brandon says, how do you see a recession affecting cash buyers? Cash buyers have always bought in properties versus every single recession. Even during the Great Depression, there's cash buyers on real estate. So as long as the world is not ending, which we I think we have bigger problems if that's the case, if we have a fallout situation, even you could still buy property in Fallout 4. So I mean, there's still cash buyers, right? I think we got a deal in bottle caps, so, though, but it's fine. I don't have any bottle cap. I mean, would, would it be the plastic bottle caps? Because I don't think that would do well. Whatever. Crystal. Yeah. So the question here is, knowing your buyer's box a must? Yes. Knowing your buyer's box is a must in wholesaling real estate. I, I think so many wholesalers right now, they they seriously feel like 
oh my gosh, I can just give to any cash buyer and they'll buy it all day. No, this is about relationships. You have to build your relationships with these cash buyers. If you do not build your relationships with these cash buyers, you will not do well. I want everybody to understand this in wholesaling real estate is a people's business. In every part of the process in wholesaling real estate, it's a people's business. When it comes down to marketing, cold calling, estimate, it's, these are people. If I have VAs working for me, they're not robots. They are human beings with families and lives outside of work and all, right? These are human beings. I look at acquisitions. Acquisitions, talking to sellers, closing deals, people, cash buyers, people. I'm dealing with people there. You know, you got to build relationships. Title companies, the people's business too. Every single aspect of this business is about people. It is not cold, hard uh, sales type thing. No, this is a people's business. And once you start changing your mindset on that, a lot of things start shifting in your business. And that's it. You're not supposed to be this crazy good seller. You, you just got to connect with people, you know? That's the goal. That's the goal in life. And that's honestly what we say. So KJ had a question. When you first started, what did your daily schedule look like for wholesaling? So I'll tell you personally what I, what I did and I'll tell you what you should do. So I was 17. I was working full-time as a bag boy. I was working pretty much full-time as a bag boy. I was captain of my wrestling team. So my schedule basically was, I don't know, was it get up at eight? I don't know. I think I was 17. I was playing video games all day. Battlefield one came out. So I was obsessed with that. Um, but really, what is it? So my daily schedule, get up at eight, I go to class, and then I would probably, <sighs> weekends I worked a lot, but sometimes I'd usually close at the grocery store, and then time in between classes and stuff, I'd probably put bandit signs out, answer phone calls after school or in between things. I answer bandit signs actually when I was doing the carts in grocery store, I'd actually slip out go to the parking lot, answer my bandit sign calls, and then get back and start bagging groceries. So any schedule I got, it was mostly bandit signs uh, when I did it. But honestly, it wasn't that complicated. I had a lot more free time to do homework, schoolwork, stuff like that, because I was, I, I've been taking, I was taking college classes since I was 15. So when I was, wait, yeah, 15. 15, basically I was taking college classes at 15. So, um, yeah, so that is, college classes are actually a lot less stressful than high school. College is actually easier than high school if you really want to look at it because of the time and everything like that. Uh, so yeah, I was pretty much at a class for, no, what's college? Two or two, three hours a day, two classes a day, right? Alternative schedule, maybe three. But like you do band signs in between that, talk to sellers, do homework, stuff like that. And then I had wrestling from, I think, three to five. Shower six, probably close from seven to 11. Uh, sometimes midnight at the grocery store. And then in between there, I do my bandit signs. Not that fun, you know, but like that was my schedule and I made it work until I was able to quit my bag boy job after doing two deals. And boom, you know, made what? Probably my manager's salary in a month. No, two months. And then quit my job and went from there. That, that was my schedule starting out. For most beginners out here, I'd probably change what I did bandit signs and just do drying for dollars, reverse drying for dollars instead. That's honestly what I'd probably do instead. But hey, that's my opinion on it. I would, you know, I, th I honestly think if I did reverse drawing for dollars, I'd probably make more money than I did with bandit signs. Bandit signs are very lucrative and they worked really well for what I did. But I feel like I would know the area better because I didn't know the areas really well when I started out in wholesaling. So, but you know, I I'm not going to change anything in my past and I, I love it. So I worked really well for me. So I'm not changing anything in my past when it comes to wholesaling. So. Let's see here. Yeah, if just so the question is, if I can't find a cash buyer, what is your out? I mean, you're out. You should get an extension and talk to more sellers, get a price reduction. If not, if you really just want to get out of out of the deal. Personally, I'd probably within my inspection period, just write a notice to the seller and get out of the deal. That's what you can do. Go to freelistling.com. It, it really breaks it down from there. How that whole entire process works but yeah benji says zach when you do the multipliers how do you justify the percentage that you're using the explanation to your buyer that's 15 percent, pretty much dot 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 
So here's the thing, Benji. Number one, you did not listen to me what I said. If you use 85% on an ARV of 225, then you did not listen to what I said. You would be using 83%. Okay, I want everyone to understand your ARV is now over 350. So that's number one. All right, Benji. Number two, your little dot, dot, dot makes no sense. It's 15. Oh my gosh. Ooh. See, you're overcomplicating this business. This is the first thing I said in the stinking video. Stop complicating things. It, it is my pet peeve. You are complicating things, Benji. You do not have to justify anything to the cash buyer. You do not see, but Benji, like, see, you said ARV is 300, but then you said 225. But you got to communicate. So number one, you do not justify to a cash buyer. This is the thing that you're in the begging phase, but, but, but it's because you are not going to convince a cash buyer how much to buy a house for. You, you do not do that. Same thing as you don't convince a seller to sell to you. You, you need to go with this contract. You, you need to, you need to sign with me right now. You need to do it. I'm convincing you to do it. No, that's terrible. That's not how business works. You do not convince people to do things. You do not coax people to sign a contract. I do not coax a cash buyer and justify why they have to overpay on the property. Mr. Seller, can you do this price? Okay. This is the price I'm at cash buyer. Hey, I'm selling this deal for 230,000. You do not justify. You just say this is the price. Do you, think, do you think Walmart has to justify how much they sell a basketball for? It's the price. You should still buy the basketball because it has great grip and other basketballs are at this price. And then if I look at a, a aggressional analysis on Amazon, and they, no, okay? This one has great grip. It's, it's a great ball. You don't just, this is the basketball. It's a Wilson. It's whatever thing, PSI. Five bucks. You don't justify. Once I see words like that, you, you're having a mindset issue. You got to switch your mindset. You're not justified. That's not how you do business. I, I seriously think you should unsubscribe from the gurus you're listening to. All right. So Benji, so cash buyers, they don't care what your ARV is. I want everybody to understand that. Cash buyers do not care what your comps are. They don't care about your ARV. They don't care. They don't even really care too much what your repair costs are going to be. Because Benji, you do not understand renovations. I don't understand renovations. Wholesalers are not renovation experts. Okay? We are not convincing our cash buyer. We have a price. Either they buy it or they don't. And if they don't buy it, we probably have it locked up for too much. Now, I want you to understand, Benji, if you lock up deals at the MAO, you will make no money. You have to get it for under the MAO. That is how the deal works. And I want you to understand that you're trying to justify the, uh, these offers and in the form, you, you, you got to do them, okay? It, it, it's a formula. Just got to follow the formula. And I just want everybody to understand that, like, guys, after doing thousands of wholesaling deals, this is what I've kind of come down to all that knowledge into condensing into this thing. This is what I found. If you're starting out in wholesaling reels and you're trying to justify what percentage you're going to be at for this, this, or that, you do it. But if you try to get a ARV of 300,000 and try to do 60% of that as your MAO, and then you got to get another 60%, you're, you would be thinking you have to get a deal under contract for a hundred thousand dollars and sell it for 250,000 for even if it makes sense. I want you to understand that percentages on high ARVs are not crazy. So let, let me give you one example, Benji. And I'm not picking on you, but I'm just trying to let you understand this. If you're 2% off on an ARV of 300,000, that's a $6,000 profit. All right. So there's no, like, you're going to make 10, 15, 20, $30,000 on this. So it's like, you don't have to justify yourself. And once you start justifying yourself, you sound desperate and the cash buyer doesn't want to buy the deal. This is our price. I have other buyers looking to buy it. Does this work for you or not? That is how you sell your deals. You don't go to McDonald's. They don't justify why you have to buy a Big Mac for this price. It's a Big Mac. This is the price. And the person looking to buy the Big Mac has to think in their self, is this worth it to me or is it worth it for not? 
You cannot tell somebody when you're selling a Big Mac, you were hungry. You want a burger. Burgers are with this. You're not, the person has to think in their self, hey, what's my repair cost going to be? What are, what are my comps? They tr Benji, they trust their comps over your comps. They trust their repairs over your repairs. The, the MAOs and all this stuff, that's for you. It's not for the buyer. It's not for the seller either. So I want you guys to understand that. I, I don't want to, you know, go after anybody or, or tell them, but like, if you're wrong, you're wrong. I want everybody to understand that. So many of you guys complicate this business. And when you complicate businesses, you try to justify, you get upset. You think, oh, Zach's formula doesn't work. It doesn't, unless you've done the amount of deals I've done, please let me know that my offer formula is wrong. But I've talked to a lot of people that do over a hundred deals. And they're like, yeah, your offer formula works. Maybe I'm a little different, but that work. People that do a lot of deals, when they start doing a lot of deals, you figure out that, yeah, that's what works. It's just, it's so funny. It's like when somebody goes and wholesale, goes, plays basketball, and they think that, you know, if they play basketball this way, it, it's so much better than what Kobe or LeBron does or, you know, no. Okay. Like you might switch it up a little, but if the greatest people of all time are doing it like this, I think it really changed much of what, what's going on in it. Right. It's just, it's so funny, but I'm just telling you guys, grinds my gears. If people start complicating this business, because you guys are so indoctrinated from these gurus and it drives me crazy. That's why I'm trying to shift everybody out here. So I want everybody to understand that, but yeah, let's do some, uh, let's do some one-on-one -on -one calls. So, uh, if you guys have a question, need help with anything, I'd uh, love to go talk to you guys and get it. So how do you hop on? How do you talk to me? All y'all guys and gals got to do is just go to whole sling Office for real, our Facebook group. And then from there, boom. All right. So all you got to do here is go to www.facebook.com slash groups slash whole ceiling houses for real. Just search whole ceiling houses for real. Heck, even search whole ceiling. probably one of the first groups that pop up. There's a lot of bunch of people in today, this morning. So uh, we got, this is the link right here. So go to the featured. It's always popped up. This is an hour ago. Uh, so click here to join here on the stream yard, or you can watch here and watch it on YouTube. Everybody watching on the Facebook group, they better subscribe. I'm telling you, we got 24 people uh, right now watching live in that Facebook group. So y'all better subscribe to the YouTube channel too. Or you're going to miss out some good content. So uh, once you hop on there, you get to talk to me absolutely for free, one-on-one, -on -one, and go from there. So without further ado, let's go talk to the people and see how we can help everybody out learn wholesaling real estate. So uh, let's see what we got. We got Dan. Hey, Zach. What's up? Oh, not too much. Uh, I don't want to take up too much of your time. Uh, congratulations on the business that you've built up over the years. Um, Thank you, man. I want to get started in this. Um, I'm located in Phoenix and uh, I've been just, I have a VA with me and I want to start um, focusing on an area uh, to have the most success, the most chance to get started and then I can expand. But I'm just got your, I know Phoenix really well. I've actually been a real estate agent here for three years um, and I've lived here all my life, but I'm just curious, what would you recommend? Should I try to stick here or should I try to find a market outside of Phoenix or outside of state? Here's the thing. You know, you know the game of being a realtor in Phoenix, right? Oh, yeah. It's dog-eat-dog -dog world, right? Yep. Same thing in wholesaling. The problem is the amount of realtors in Miami compared to the population is a lot less than the amount of realtors in Phoenix. Sorry, the amount of wholesale. And the, is the equal to the amount of realtors in Phoenix versus the population. Mm -hmm. The issue about wholesaling is because so many people hold... The reason why Phoenix is so hot is because everything's built on a rock, which means yep. it actually works pretty well with the foundations and everything was pretty much built since the sixties. Mm -hmm. So there's some older houses, but not too old. So the real estate actually works really good for used homes, right? The secondary market's hot and the new market's really good. So there's always an influx and there's you know, a huge mix of stuff it. like that. So yeah. the issue is <laughs> there's more wholesalers per capita in Phoenix than there is in Miami or anywhere else. And that's because the industry is so big and a lot of, you know, the education space is there. So, uh, unfortunately that, that is your big problem. Mm -hmm. As you know, as a realtor, there's a ton of houses in Phoenix and, mm -hmm. you know, Maricopa County basically. Right. So you can do it there. It's like being a realtor in Phoenix though. You know, 
there, there's a realtor for every blade of grass there. <laughs> yeah. And uh, um, not many blades of grass, but for every cactus spike, yeah. there's, a, there's a realtor, right? So that's the problem you have, obviously. The coolest part about being a real, the coolest part about wholesaling versus realtors, you can do things virtually. Yep. So I tell everybody, there's people that make millions of dollars in Phoenix wholesaling and there's people that make no money, right? So I would probably just say you should do a 50-50 approach. That would be my honest opinion. Okay. Spend 50% of your time wholesaling in Phoenix, 50% in a secondary market, virtual market, and see which one after two or three months gives you better results. Okay. All right. Awesome. Thanks, Zach. You might crush in Phoenix. There, there's yeah. people that do it, right? So it's like, I'm not stopping anybody, right? So cream always rises to the top. Gotcha. Awesome. Got any other questions? Uh, that's it. No, yeah, I just wanted to see where I'd focus on the most. Don't want right, to man. spend my tires too much in uh, everywhere, you know? All right, cool. Have you, uh, how many listings have you ever done? Uh, buy, I'm usually am a buyer agent. Um, so I've okay. done over the last three years, probably around 15, 22, somewhere around 15, okay. 22, somewhere on there. So, I mean, you um, got listed experience. about three or four. Yeah. So you got some experience. I, I think wholesaling should be, it, it won't be like, it's kind of going from learning Spanish to Italian, you know, yeah. it's like, it's not that it, it's difficult, but it's not the most complicated thing in the world versus Spanish to like Chinese. So yeah. I think you should grasp it pretty simple. I've got a really good idea of uh, deals and motivations going on. I've even actually kind of tested the idea of looking uh, on the MLS and uh, checking out with motivated sellers on the realtors things that's been on the market for a while. I've got some hits, but it's getting it. It's not that bad, but I, I don't want to strictly focus on that one one thing. You know, the problem with that man is everybody in Phoenix is doing the MLS also. Yeah, exactly. so, are you doing, <laughs> so every realtor now knows that everyone's trying to wholesale on the MLS. Yeah, every listing gets 10 calls from investors. No, not not investors, wholesalers. Wholesalers, yeah. Right? Exactly. And then you got the investors. Yeah. <laughs> and so that's the problem with wholesaling on the MLS. It's become super... It used to be a cute little niche thing. Mm -hmm. In my market, you can sort of do it, but you can't at the same time. I found even in Florida, you got to give 100 to 150 lowball contracts out there to even get a bite mm. because there's people that do it nationally they have a software they'll send out a thousand <laughs> contracts a day so in all over florida so it, it, it's going to be a thing where it's just it's going to get more saturated there was a time where it worked really well but just be careful with that okay sounds like a plan that's it appreciate but in the that. virtual market i probably would look into it but you might have to get the mls there so yeah whatever you whatever you want Okay. Appreciate it. Thanks. All right. Keep it up. Boom. Awesome. 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 Love to see that. Next here we got Anthony. How's it going, Zach? I'm blessed, man. How are you? I'm good. I'm good. I'm working on getting my first deal. Um, I actually bought a course before I ran into you, and uh, I feel like I wish I ran into you first. <laughs> um, but long story short, I'm in New York, and I had a deal on the contract. Uh, details about the deal. The homeowner recently got into a divorce and the property's ARV was about 90K. They owed 50K on the property still. So me not knowing it's my first deal ever, I uh, try to look out for the seller and try and get them to sign the contract for 50K and then end up at least making 5K sell to a buyer for 55. Um, fortunately, I couldn't find a buyer. I'm still looking. But one buyer actually gave me the benefit of the doubt of explaining like, hey, this isn't really much of a deal for us. We're looking for more of a discount. Um, and yeah, that's my uh, experience so far. Okay. So this deal, it's under contract for how much again? 50K. 50. And what are the cash bar? How many cash bars have you brought that to? Four. And what have they all said? Each one. They all denied it. One of them gave me the benefit of doubt to explain that it wasn't really much of a deal and what they're actually looking for in that area. Price or area? Uh, price and area, I would say. So what price were they at? They were at 40K. Okay. And I had on a contract for 50. So you already know what you got to do. Exactly. That's pretty exactly. much it, man. He would have bought it at 40, so... Is this upstate New York or a virtual market? Upstate New York. Are you in upstate New York? 
Yes, sir. I'm actually in the same uh, area as the as the market I'm marketing to. Where are we? Syracuse, Rochester, Utica. So that's about Utica. 45 minutes from Syracuse. That's not bad. That's a good market. Yeah. Yeah. You're in a really good market, dude. Yeah. You just gotta get lower offers. I think you're good. There's so many of those old type of houses out there. Absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah, you're All right. a good market. Well, I'm gonna keep trucking and I'll keep you updated. Uh, a yeah. quick question though. Quick question. I'm sorry. Um, no, when, when, it comes, when it comes to finding uh, attorneys, do you have any in mind or know of any in New York? Because I am working with one that I was telling you that I got the first deal on the contract, but it took about two months for me to even get that deal on the contract. Just waiting for the seller attorney to get back to the buyer attorney, then for me to sign and for also the uh, seller of the house to sign. Go Just to the Facebook groups and look. But honestly, was it your attorney that was the issue or the seller's attorney? So it, it was the seller's attorney, but I was, I guess, put on to the seller's attorney through my buyer attorney, through my buyer attorney. Okay. I mean, it's the seller's attorney that's the issue, not yours. Mm -hmm. So I don't see a problem with that. Okay. All right. All right. Appreciate Let me it. If you got any questions, I'm always here to help and uh, appreciate it. Keep going, man. What's your marketing okay. strategy? Uh, right now, I'm using PropStream, and I'm skip tracing leads. I just finished your top seven uh, PropStream market to uh, market to, and um, yeah, I'm just skip tracing and sending out bat batch emails. I mean SMS. I'm sorry. Awesome, man. Yes, sir. All right, let me know if you got help. Uh, if you need help with anything, Anthony. You got it. Thank you. Oh, all right. Akil. Hello, can you hear me? Loud and clear. What is up? What's up, Zach? <laughs> just wanna just just wanna say I love I've been I joined your like uh, free wholesaling class and it's working. It's I'm learning a lot from it. So I was like greatly sent a a senior want to send you a big shout out to you and 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 you and you and Rick. Thank you, man. Shout out to you for the support. Yeah, I just had I just had like just one quick question for you. I'm mean, I I downloaded your like a free um. Um, contract. Now, when it comes to like um, when it comes to the, like um, signing the contract, does the um title free and title free clear and clear title applies to all situations or just only one um property like situation like properties like pro base like that? All properties in clean clean title. Okay. Okay. Just want just want to make sure that if I what do you I mean by the, that? Because maybe I, I'm confused too. Oh no, I'm. I, I was. I was wanting to make clear that, like, uh, if there was something, if there was like a tax lien on the property, does that does that not constitute free and clear title? Does, no, does that totally separate? The title company has to clear it, but at closing, it should be all cleared out with the payments and stuff. What okay. state are you in? Uh, Georgia. Georgia. Yeah, you still got to use an attorney there, but they they all convey the clean title. All right. Thank you so much, Zach. Appreciate. it. Let me know if you need help. What market are you in? I am in the Atlanta market. Atlanta? Okay. Metro Atlanta or like Forsyth Atlanta? Or what Metro. are we talking here? I'm Metro. Metro. Okay. Yeah. All right. There's some good neighborhoods there. You got to figure out where the cash buyers want it from there. But that's still a good, decent market. And then some areas 30 minutes around you. Good to go. Excellent. Thank you so much again. All right. Keep it up. Thank you. Boom. Awesome. 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 Capital wants to know how we got on camera to ask a question. Go to Wholesaling Houses for Real, the Facebook group. Join it. Go to the Featured tab on the top. Uh, and then look at the replay on the video too. It will be on there. Facebook users, how do you get on to ask questions? Go to the Featured tab. It's pinned on the top. Okay. Featured tab. And then boom, stream our link. Nate says, Zach... What's the best way to find and vet boots on the ground? Craigslist and Facebook is probably going to be the best way to find a boots on the ground for you. Ultimately, it's up to you which one you want to do. Uh, but I've always found when, you, when you're cold calling um, for these type of people, so I can just go call people off Craigslist, call people off uh, Facebook and see if they're going to be a good group, boots on the ground. I just ask them the same questions if they are just willing to do the task, if they're willing to take basically take my advice on what to do 
and do it, they'll do well, right? So you still have to call these people up. I find people try to like text a boots on the ground type guy or gal out here. And that's never a good, that's never a good look. Okay. That, that, that's never uh, the best one. So I would probably just post a job and, and that's always going to be the best results. Uh, the job site too works really well too. I, I don't think the job sites are too bad on there too. So uh, whatever one you really want, that's honestly what I found. Let's see here. So Higher Ground REI says, I found a FISBO listing that was 265000 uh, to lower to 225000 Do you want to call them to close it and see if this is a deal? I mean, bro, I can close it, but you you don't become a better wholesaler by doing that, right? So it was a two sixty five, dollars and it was lower to two twenty five. dollars Honestly, you, you need to do it yourself. Like, just being honest, you have to have the conversation. Like, you're not going to become a better wholesaler by not doing it, right? You're not going to be a better wholesaler by just sitting on your butt and not doing that wanting me to do it, right? I just want you to understand that you have to do the work yourself. And if you don't do the work yourself, you're not going to get better at wholesaling. And that is the main point here, guys. You got to get better by yourself. I did not become better at wholesaling by not, like, I had to do it myself, you know? Let's see here. Joseph said, I had a distressed seller last week. He bought for 140000 last year, had an awful tenant. Property is absolutely trashed. Offered him 100000 and he wanted 290000 Definitely not a deal, but we'll follow up. Woo! He wanted two nine. I mean, what was the MIO? What, what was the property worth to a cash buyer? I mean, that, that's, that's my only question I got on there. That's, that's an interesting one, you know? Joseph says some people are just out of, yeah, a lot of sellers are out of touch with the reality, but that's just how the game works, you know? It's how it all works. Let's see. Second one thing on here. All right, looking good. All right. Um, yeah, Georgia is an attorney state. Let's see. So I love getting stuff like this because y'all like complaining, but y'all never hop on the one-on-ones and actually get it straight for me. Because if I can deep dive in anybody's business, I can figure out if they've... Honestly, all I got to ask is what your marketing is. And I can figure out exactly based on your marketing, what your results are and how much money you're making in wholesaling. So I just want you all to understand that, right? So calling and calling and calling and nothing. So here's the thing, playlist, since... You haven't hopped on the live. I will have to ask you this question. And this is when I don't get anybody to ever answer me back. It's always crickets. Number one, what type of list are you doing? This is where a lot of people get it wrong. If you're calling the wrong list, you're not going to do well. Don't You, you got to get the right list. You got to get a very motivated list from your sellers too. Number two, this is very, very important. What is your skip tracing? If you have bad skip tracing, probably not going to do too well. Number three, what is your script? And number four, what is your schedule? From there, and then number five, what's your follow-up? And that's honestly, I can tell if you're doing any lead deals or anything like that. I think so many people, uh, so Josh, how to hop on the live? Just go to the Facebook group. Uh, Marcus. Yes, sorry. Hello? Yes, sir. Yeah, your mic's... Uh, change your mic or unmute it and then mute it back up. One second. These boys have like he probably has one of those androids, you know. Hello. Yes, I'm back. No, I'm gonna kick you out and then just come back in. All right. Okay. So I kicked him off. He's got to join back in. That usually fixes the issue, but who knows? Uh, so while we're waiting for him, let's uh, let's answer some housekeeping things. Uh, we, me and Rick are going to go live tomorrow at one o'clock. So always excited for that. So we are going to go live at one. Uh, so me and Rick, we're going to have some very interesting conversations uh, about one really important topic. And it's kind of 
something we've kind of talked about today a little more, but we're going to go a really big deep dive on it. Uh, so it's going to go very, very well. So let's see if Marcus uh, switched it. Marcus. Yeah, is that better? That's way better. Okay, yeah, so I was through my AirPods. I'm not sure why I was messing up. You're good. Okay, so, um, yeah, so just a couple questions. The One of the other things I was trying to figure out is we just switched from Mojo to Batch Dialer. Um, biggest reason we switched was, um, you know, just to do a change, but also we were having a lot of issues with uh, with spam on Mojo and, you know, saw the benefits of Batch Dialer. You can buy the numbers through there, of course, and have multiple going in rotation, everything like that. Um I just saw how a few people have them set up. I guess the, the good thing we liked about Mojo was that for the most part, it'll call a couple people and all the numbers in there, um, you know, at the same time versus I guess with batch dialer, it's in a rotation where it calls, you know, the first number goes all the way through then the second number all the way through stuff like that. And when we skip trace, obviously, you get, you know, you get to the, the numbers of, you know, three, four, five, um, you know, you're not getting as many connections and, you know, then it makes you go kind of a long time without getting any answers and kind of, you know, craps whoever's calling out. Um, so I guess I'm just trying to see what, what's your setup for, I guess, Batch Dialer and how you have it, or I guess, um, you know, what's the best way to go about that? So, all right. What, what's your business looking like? How many calls, how many number, like what, what's, I, so I got to figure out what type of calling you're doing. Yeah. VAs, so, I mean, VAs. yeah, I mean, so we're calling, you know, five, five, five days a week. Um, there's five, uh, four of us dialing, um, you know, try, making about 1500 calls a day where we have leads that we get. Um, from a place here, we're in Dallas, um, that, you know, probates, pre foreclosure, stuff like that, as well as driving for dollars. And then um, we just started, you know, after watching, trying to get all the list for the water shut off and utilities, we've requested all those. Um, the thing about with Dallas, they won't, they won't give you the list, you have to go into their website and request them and then continuously follow up with them to get them to do the list, everything like that. So um, we're following up trying to get those right now. But at the moment, it's a pre foreclosures probates list that we've been getting and then driving for dollars. What have your results been on Mojo? Uh, I mean, we, we are getting a lot of deals on, I mean, a good amount of deals on Mojo. Um, it, it's been just me for the past year and a half, and I've been averaging probably about three deals a month, uh, give or take. Um, and then uh, we, I just had four guys join me um, two months ago. And, uh, right. you know, we're having, we're having a little bit of, um, you know, a good amount of uh, follow-ups as far as, you know, the probate and stuff like that. Usually, you know, they're going through, you know, they have to go through probate. So, it's a, you know, it's a follow-up game there. And then the driving for dollars, you know, we've had, um, a decent amount of luck. I think, um, you know, the biggest thing with the driving for dollars right now is just with, of course, the way the market changes, you know, they get told they get an offer, you know, three months ago, four months ago, and obviously you have to you know, help them, you know, educate them on how obviously the market's changed and, you know, those offers aren't the same as they kind of were. So, um, I mean, we're having good progress. Like I said, I think our biggest issue is just with the dialer. Um, you know, we're going, because like I said, the way the rotation is, I guess, on batch dialer is they'll, they'll go, we'll go two or three hours without really getting any answers. Cause it's calling out, you know, those, possible number six, seven, eight, or, you know, uh, five, six, seven numbers in there versus the first three, you know, we'll have a good amount of luck on in the first, the first um, couple hours of dialing versus towards the back end of that list. I mean, you're smart, Marcus, right? Like, why don't you just upload just the three numbers? Why are you putting the seven in there? So I guess, I guess the biggest thing right there is just because we've have had luck where, you know, we get in, it, it, I, I personally use uh, lead Sherpa. I've used, okay. um, <clears throat> I've used batch to, to skip trace before. I think maybe, you know, maybe it's just, me. IPad. yeah, I, I've used both. I've, I just feel like I've had better luck with lead trip, but maybe, maybe it was just a one-off. I'm not sure. Maybe I could actually do a sit down and compare. If you're doing but, deals from it, don't change anything. Yeah, ex exactly. So, so I've had, I've been having luck with it, but I guess, I guess why I've, I'm hesitant to do that is just because I have had deals where, um, you know, the first three numbers are the per possible three numbers for the person. And then the the last six, num six numbers are the best three numbers for maybe a relative. And I have had deals where, you know, I get in touch with someone's uncle or their their ex, you know, ex spouse or whatever. And I've gotten deals from doing that. So I guess it's the fear of missing out on a deal from, you know, from getting in touch with a relative or something like that. OK, so your main issues go hours without getting an, uh, an answer. So, yeah, so I get because I guess that's the difference Crazy. with batch dialer is it, it doesn't just call, you know, the uh, the way the rotation is, is it doesn't just call, um, you know, person number one. It doesn't, you know, or the first five people, it doesn't just call the no. numbers for the first five people and move on. It's in a rotation of the first number of each one, because how I have it set up is um, I believe is uh, the um, where you only it only calls each each number once for the list. So I saw how some of some people have their batch dialer set up. 
where it calls them three times and then waits, you know, three hours. I guess that's like the recommended. But I, I saw I did saw one person from Vax TV post a video where they said they have it to where it does one dial per per number. So then we just call every single number one time for each of that lead and, and then move on to the next list. I'd probably do that. I mean, I'm trying to think here. Like, I would probably just stick to the top three. I'm just being honest with you. I think you're wasting too much time. Yeah, that's that's what I think too. Yeah, I think, I it's think just you're wasting thing. too much. I have time. seen luck from getting in touch with a relative, but but then at the same time, you know, it could yeah. I think you're wasting too much time, and you need to be. I think if you can fine tune your data a little more, it'd be a little better too. Okay. So, out of how many deals did you do this year? And I'm just doing this to help you out. Yeah, no. Um, so like I said, I've been by myself up until September, and we did about. I think I did. I I did at least three a month, almost four. So what is that? Uh, I'm basically right under 30 deals. So let's do 30. Out of those 30 deals, what list were they from? If I look at a pie uh, chart. So there, it was uh, mainly dri mainly driving for dollars, but then there was some probate. Um, and that, that's pretty much it. I mean, I How many from really pre-foreclosures cold calling them? I'm sorry? How many cold call pre-foreclosure deals did you get from cold calling? Uh, I haven't got any. I, I haven't had any luck with pre-foreclosures. That's what I thought. I'm just letting you know, pre-foreclosures are not a good cold calling list. Uh -huh. So I don't want you to waste your time with that, especially with a bunch of VAs. I would use yeah. that resources into more drying for dollars. Dallas is huge. Yeah. Honestly, it'd actually be better, dude, if you could do reverse. Do you do reverse drying for dollars? Oh, uh, yeah. We actually just watched your video on that not too long ago. So, yeah, we want to start getting use into that the effort it took for the pre foreclosures and just do reverse drying for dollars. Honestly, the amount of money you save not doing the pre foreclosures, you could use for another type of list. Gotcha. So, I mean, heck, dude, try the evictions list. Do you need tired landlords at all? Yes. Yeah. Okay. So, honestly, yeah, I've gotten a couple of these, dude. Not much. I think I've, I've only gotten two or three deals since I've been doing it the past year and a half. Still two to three deals, though, you know? Yeah. yeah um, I, I would probably focus on a different type of list than a pre foreclosure. Okay. And then I guess, I guess the other one is because, of course, you know, batch, batch style or, or batch, um, you know, revamped and has their list and everything. Um, the other question I was going to ask is when, when you're pulling those lists, obviously, like, um, you know, I watched your videos on how to do them. How often do you do you pull, you know, the same list, like go back and pull the same list, you know, because, uh, you know, how or how often it updates new people on those lists where you go back and pull it again? Depends on the list, man. So code violations, monthly probates, monthly, bi biweekly, uh, sometimes to a point, too, because I mean, Dallas is pretty big there. As much as you can pull a government list as quick as possible. And then I really pull the high equity list. Like every, I think, I think we've done a little more now, but like every four months I'll redo the high equity list. Okay. But I'll do it off my other list. So what I mean by that, if I pull a hundred thousand high equities, mm -hmm. if I pull it again and remove the duplicates, it's like 10,000 new ones, right? Okay. okay. It's not that complicated. And the high equity list I honestly pulled just cause it gets rid of the sold properties and inherited properties, things like that. It doesn't really change that much. Uh, so I honestly, just letting you know from my cold calling, because we do such high volume, we just blanket high equity. Like if you have any equity in the property, boom, all pre foreclosures are in there, right? All tired land, there's already in that list, right? They're all in the list and a lot of drawing for dollars too, but we kind of sprinkle that in there too. So that's how we do it. A little different, right? We're, we're a little more volume, but I'm not as big as Dallas, right? Yeah. So we're probably, I mean, it's not that big. So yeah. Okay, and then another another question. Uh, it, it could be different now. This was a while back. I wanted to ask on a video I was, or on a live that I was in a while back. Is on so on your? I, I've been using an assignment I got from another wholesaler here, but I, I you know I, I have have uh, you know had situations. Uh, when luckily nothing's bad happened to me where like things could come up with legal wise. I saw on your assignments. I know you you preach how you know they can protect you and everything. Ha, on your assignments, don't you show how much you're you're making on there? If I remember looking at it correctly. Yep. I mean. They're gonna know, right? It's gonna be so, 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 so I can, so I can see that too. But, but I think one thing I've noticed from a couple of my deals is I've had investors, and they see, you know, I've I've done a couple of bangers, you know, 30, 40 grand deals, and you know, I've had investors be a little salty about them, um, you know, and then you know, as they see that, and you know, they think, oh well, now every deal I send them, I have all this room. Um, so, you know, what I've seen a lot, and what a lot of wholesalers around here are doing that I've talked to are starting to do more double closes. Um, just so, you know, they don't know, you know, all the details in between. Of course, that costs a little bit of money, but at the same time, I guess if they can keep the relationship, 
Um, you know, and it's not every investor. A lot of investors don't care as long as the money makes sense. But I have just noticed, you know, a couple of investors, you know, they see that and they get a little like, you know, iffy on it or, you know, maybe in future deals, they, they think they can negotiate more because they've seen how much room I've had on previous deals. So does that not, you know, versus like my assignments now just say, you know, I'm assigning it to them at that price. And if I don't do a double close, of course, they see it at closing. Um, but if I do do a double close, of course, they don't see how much it is. And, you know, they, they don't, um, you know, they don't make. Maybe I'll think about it when I send a future deals, I guess. I get high fives from cash buyers when I make over 40 or 50. See, <laughs> I, I have two, but I also have like had some, some cash buyers just get salty about it. And then, like I said, when I send them another deal, they're like, you know, they try to send me a, a back and ask a price of, you know, 20 grand less because now they think, oh, he clocked me this last time. You know, he's probably trying to clock me again, I guess. Uh, maybe, maybe I heard the All right. I mean, the, the, dude, this is like the, this is the th same thing. Getting cocked is such a funny term because... You're in Dallas, there's so many cash buyers. I tell every cash buyer before I send them a deal, are you okay if I make a hundred grand on this? So they think I'm gonna make a hundred grand no matter what. Yeah. So they don't care. No, I care about the price. If they're salty already, I don't care, right? Now here's the thing. I explained to every cash buyer that I'm sending this to five or 10 other people. So a lot of these people are first time buyers too. So like, if you don't wanna buy it based on my assignment fee, someone will buy it just based on the price. I yeah. explain it to every single cash buyer. Gotcha. Right. And okay. I tell the cash buyer, I mean, we can double close it and then I got to charge more of you. Like we can do that too. If you want, we can name, make it a, a game if you want. I mean, it depends, dude. So yeah. But the thing with cash buyers, is if they think I'm double closing, they think they're, I'm cocking them. On yeah. It. That's yeah. I guess. Yeah. And they're going to know. And here's the thing with double closing. When I build my, they know what double closing is because it's legal. Right. Yeah. If I buy for 100, sell it to him for 150, he's going to figure out I made 50 on it. So it doesn't hide it. it the double closing is honestly for the seller, not you. Yeah, sure. Okay. So do you ask your cash buyers that got salty if they're okay if you made 100 grand on the deal? No, I mean, I've, ne I've never straight up. I think my biggest thing too is with those ones that oh. have has been an issue with is, you know, I've tried to go above and beyond with some of my, you know, frequent buyers and, you know, due to dinners and, you know, build a friendship. So then I think it's mainly so, you know, they've, no, th I think they think maybe, oh, now we're friends. Now I should help them out, take care of it. So that could also be probably. Yeah, you're being friends with them. <laughs> yeah, exactly. exactly. Them. We're, se we're buying and selling things. Got you. Like, I, this is a business. And so I don't get emotional with people. Got you. Yeah, I, I right. think, geez, uh, I'll try to be get, you know, I just started doing, I've done a couple of rehabs. I'm trying to get into the new construction as well. So that's why I'm trying to network, you know, also it just helps out to know people that, have guys that do everything and stuff like that. But yeah, you're right. Okay. You can use a realtor too and give them part of your assignment. So yeah. they'll have incentive to get the best price also. Gotcha. Okay. All right, man. That's, that's pretty much it for the most part. I mean, any other advice you could give someone in Dallas? I mean, it's kind of crazy with how everything is right now, but I've noticed a lot of people are stopping with, I, I still have, you know, a decent amount of people buying lots, but I know new construction's kind of slowed down a bit over here. Truth is I would, the, you got to focus on more motivated lists and that's honestly, what's going to give you the best results in the edge. You got to be quicker. You got to go on as many appointments as you can. You got to lowball more, right? That's the honest truth. There's a ton of comp competition, but it, you got what you got to do is look at your data. And what I've seen is how many deals do you do for driving for dollars? Uh, I've done a total in the past year and a half in driving for dollars. I mean, any year. Just in driving for dollars. Out I mean, of the 30. Yeah. Oh, out of the 30, I'd say probably 20 of those are driving for dollars. The rest are pretty good. Uh, probate, I would say probate and then like i said two pre foreclosures or not pre foreclosures uh um yeah pre foreclosures i guess you could say so drawing for dollars is overwhelmingly probably one of the best pound for pound lists right for yeah I, yeah i i agree i i think the biggest thing is you know i i've seen a lot of the the success on my own and i know i know how much i believe in it and of course you know through everyone else and you know these guys that i've just had just hired um you know, they came in at a time where everything's, you know, the market's where it is and they're getting, you know, a lot of no's and beat up a lot on the phone for drum for dollars and they don't believe in it as much as I do because I've seen the results and they haven't. So I don't know if it's also just kind of a timing thing or anything like that. Are they too. getting paid commissions? Yes. Yeah. Commission. I mean, that that's okay. How much is the commissions you're getting? Uh, I've, I've been doing 30%. So, and they just started a, a month and a half ago. Wow. So. Yeah. So, but the, the reason it uh, is, is because, um, uh, you know, there, I, I was in the car business before this. I did finance for five years when I turned, you know, from 18 to 20, 20, 20 uh, or six years, 18 to 24. And then I started this. 
Um, so, you know, I brought in the other three guys that I believe in, motivated, also showing them how to do rehab. So that's uh, I'm doing rehabs as well. So I'm showing them that part. So I'm bringing a lot of value to them. Um, you know, I'm bringing in guys that I, you know, I want to help build and actually make this like a legit thing. So, I mean, dude, I'm just being honest with you. Uh, why don't you just pay someone 20, 20 bucks an hour to just drive for dollars or reverse drive for dollars for you? So, no, yeah, yeah, yeah. That's, that's way cheaper and they don't get upset if they don't get a deal. Yeah. Right? Yeah, yeah. Honestly, I would get a list of all the water shutoffs, code violations, and let's say probates mm -hmm. and get a list like, you know, like a dmzac.com. You can go and just import a list into there and it'll give you a route. Have them drive the route. And then every property that they on that route, they have to drive around that area, look for the ugliest houses and put st sticky notes on there. And then you give them like 5% of the deal, like 5% at 20 bucks an hour, maybe even pay their 15, pay their gas 20, whatever it is. Right. Yep. Dude, that that's way better, man. But you, you said, what was that? I, I wasn't aware of that. You said go to DM. What like, was it? Deal machine. DMZack. Oh, oh, sorry. Okay. Yeah. 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 So yeah. DMZack.com is deal machine. But like, dude, just make a route. And then I think it's cheaper. Have you paid these people out that have done the 30% yet? Uh, yeah. Two, two of them have gotten to a $25,000 deal and then a fifteen and a $7,000 deal so far. All right. 15000 15, at 30% is 4500 and if I paid somebody 20 bucks an hour, it's 225 hours. I mean, honestly, it kind of comes out the same. Sometimes they would like if you bring the percentage down and then pay them per hour just so they get less upset with you. Gotcha. But it's not that bad. Like, it works out. Yeah. And I mean, another thing too is they're three, they're three really good friends of mine. And we, we were on the car business. I mean, the car business, we were all in finance. I mean, you make great, you know, you can make, you know, 200 plus thousand dollars a year so also i can't you know to sell them and bring them and you know grow them and also like i said i'm helping them with the rehab so you know i'm they're paying me as their general contractor on top of it too you know I, i'm not trying to help them get into this world and get out of that space because obviously you know the freedom versus and i don't know if you know anything about the car business but you're there 24 7 so you know that's kind of also why i did why i went that route versus just hiring cold callers i get it i honestly what i'm seeing here is most of your deals come from drawing for dollars and you obviously haven't drove for dollars all of dallas right so yeah, I would expand that. That's where the expand you're doing it though. So mm -hmm. it's good. That's where the expansion should be. And I think that's where you got to double down on your efforts. So, gotcha. cause once you double down, you'll get one extra $15,000 deal and that'll pay for all the drawing for dollars, right? Exactly. Just keep, keep it exactly. going from there. So dude, I actually think you should expand it even more. Why not? Yeah. I know a guy in Dallas that did 95 deals a couple years ago, drawing for dollars with a big team. In Dallas, yeah, like I said, I mean that's that's where I've had most of my success. That's why I believe in it so much because I, I guess Dallas is huge. Time, it's like, time again, so. there's a lot of people doing it, and a lot of people making deals. But there's so many properties that everyone can eat. Everybody can eat at the plate, right? It's a buffet. Okay, you ain't gonna eat the entire buffet. So yeah, dude, that's great, man. Expand from there. That's where it's working. Quit the pre foreclosures, and that's honestly what I'd say. Gotcha. Okay. All right, man. I, I appreciate. It. I think that I think that's about it for me. Um, yep, yeah, that's it. Thank you for your time, man. I appreciate all the uh, all the help you've given me. You've helped me, you know, help me make way over, well over six figures in the past year and a half. And you know, anytime I talk to anybody doing wholesaling, you know, I always be like, "Hey, this kid pre pretty much taught me everything." So uh, that's appreciate cool. it, man. A kid, we're the same age, but <laughs> one last thing, dude. Um, you can also talk to your cash buyers and see where they're looking to buy, and then try for dollars in those areas if you want to get yeah. the best spreads. Oh, but you already know what you're doing. I, I, I mean, I have a, if I have an end buyer that it hits me up and says, hey, you know, I need a lot or I'm looking for a 3-2 or 3-1 or whatever in this zip code, you know, I send the guys literally to that zip code and have them start. And, a, and a, you know, pretty much pull, what I'll have them do is I'll uh, type in the zip code in Zillow to where it pretty much just gives you like a, like a you know, like a surface area or whatever. And I have, you know, each guy start in like a different corner and just kill the whole thing in like a day or two. And then, you know, stuff like, or not a day or two, but, you know, and have them drive for a couple hours in the morning and then we hit the phones during the day from, you know, 12 to 12 to seven or something like that. Just keep expanding that. Are you on all the appointments yourself? Yeah, I, I am right now until, you know, I feel comfortable enough where everybody can kind of hold their own. I've been going on every single appointment with whoever, which, whoever, which whichever person, you know, gets the, gets the appointment set. So here's what you should do. Keep expanding the marketing until you literally you're losing money by not having acquisitions. People go and gotcha. then expand out 
get out of the business, expand it more and keep making more money. That's the goal, dude. So expand the marketing and then get in the acquisitions part where you literally have three people going to appointments at the same time, because that's the only way it's going to work. And then go from there. That is your goal. And that's what you should be doing. So dude, how did McDonald's get big by just having one store or having multiple markets and not multiple, like multiple stores, right? Yeah. Yeah. So you gotta do it, man. You, you know what you're doing, man. Don't go too fast, but uh, keep it up straight. And dude, in a year or two, you're going to be, you know, you're not even going to know who you are like financially. So it's good, man. Gotcha. All right, man. Appreciate it. Thank you. Have a good one, Marcus. Yep. Boom. Love to see it from Marcus there. Love people getting free information and uh, doing very well with it. Love seeing that. Let's see. Jason. Jason. Yo. Hello. All right, Jason. Have a good one. Tristan. Hello. What's up, man? How you doing? I'm blessed. Give me one second. Ugh. All right, so... Hello? Hello? Let's see if he's working here. Hello? Sorry, I disconnected. Can you hear me better? Right. Yep, loud and clear. What's up? How can I help you out? Yo. Hello? There we go. All right, what's up? All right. So I'm going on an appointment here on Sunday, and um, I just had a quick question about uh, dropping that EMD. So during when when you take it to the title company, that EMD is, is due when um, I get the seller to sign and I give them the contract at the title company, or when yeah. I actually find a buyer and they sign. EMD with the contract with the seller. Awesome, man. Awesome. Yeah, that, that was really about it. I got uh, pretty excited here, so I think this will be a first deal. I'm making. Did you get locked up yet? Not yet. I'm going on Sunday, so get to work. <laughs> yes, sir. I'll let you know. Okay. Awesome, man. Keep it up, dude. I love seeing that. All right. Take it easy, Zach. Bye. Take it easy. Bow. All right. Let's see what other questions you got. Young Doreal says, how do y'all work up the nerve to cold call? By doing it. You don't get better at cold calling by just sitting on your butt. You got to do it, right? You have to be intentional in what you do. Go out there, start talking to motivated sellers. That is how you get better in this business. You have to actually start taking the action. That will yield you the results. That will yield you the results, guys and gals. You cannot make money in this business by just sitting your butt not taking action. Results in wholesaling is equal to the action you take. Action equals results. Action equals results. So I have to take consistent action to get the results that I want, the results I deserve. Remember, in this business, guys, you don't get what you want, you get what you deserve. And if you did not market, if you did not talk to the sellers, if you did not get over the fears, you do not deserve to make money in this business. You have to get out of your comfort zone, and that's how you're going to make money in wholesaling real estate. Guys, it's a people's business. If you don't have conversations with people, you're not going to do well. If you don't make offers to people, you're not going to do well. If you don't make offers to the sellers, it ain't going to do well. You got to make the calls. You got to make the effort. So many people say this like, oh, Zach, I'm so nervous to cold call. I'm so nervous to have conversations with sellers. I'm so nervous to do this. And here's the thing. You might be nervous, but the person that wants it more is going to be less nervous. I just show you, the person that wants it more is going to be the same amount of nervous, but they need to get that deal. So they're more willing to go out there and change the life. Unless your need to become successful outweighs your uh, fear of calling, that's it. I think so many people get so stressed out over it. I've been doing your free course. Amazing. Saved me uh, over nine grand. Love it. Love it. Love helping the people out. Um. 
I mean, guys, you can buy a course if you want. I, I'm not telling you it's the worst. It's you're going to become like worse at wholesaling, but I just I, I don't think it's going to help you. I I, I don't think it's going to help you as much as watch, just watching these videos. But it's up to you which ones you want to do. You know. Let's see. I have a probate that says he wants 67, but the mortgage is 48 to pay off the loan. How do mortgages factor into an offering? It doesn't, it doesn't factor what the, so what a mortgage is, it doesn't affect what the property is worth. It never will. Okay. Like it's never going to, but it might be affect how much the seller is willing to take on it. So if a motivated seller out here wants to sell the property for, let's say 67, they owe 48. That means they'll net 19, right, on it? Oh, yeah, I'm the math wizard. <laughs> uh, 19 on it, right? So if they're going to net 19,000, that's fine. It just depends what they want to net, right? Maybe they take 50, they get two, right? It also depends which one you want to do here. So, yeah. Honestly, I'll tell everybody, if you can't find the link from the instructions in the beginning, it's going to be very hard for you to negotiate with the seller. If I can show you how to pop up the link, it's going to be harder for you to pull a list too. But go to the feature tab, wholesaling else is for real on the top, pin on there. Jack says, my car broke, I'm broke, and I need to make this deal work. No better motivation than having no choice. Hey, they say burn the bridges, right? That's, uh, that's a good one too. But I think everybody watching this video right now uh, knows that you don't have to be broke to have the biggest want or need to become successful, right? Like, I mean, I wanted it bad. I just didn't want to work a job. And that my want to not work a job as a bag boy was so much higher than some people that have no money, right? I was willing to work hard. I mean, working a regular job was hard enough for me. So I was fine just pushing it, right? That's what you guys got to do. Well, so viral life hacks says, do you do on market? I do on market deals. Not the biggest fan of it. Right. Uh, but yeah, you, you can do deals doing on market wholesaling. It, it's not going to be as fun or sexy as off market. You're probably not going to make as much money, uh, but yeah, you can do it. And a lot of people say this, you know, 90% of all real estate transactions, even 95 are done on market. That's true. So why are you neglecting it? Ah, ah great, great, great way to sell the course. Honestly, what, what my opinion on this is 80% of all discounted properties are sold off market. So why are you going to focus on the 20%? Right? Uh, so th that's the way I look at it, right? Man Skeleton says, I have access to 3,000 unit apartment. Bro, I got access to 30,000 apartments with a realtor right the access isn't important if you have a, a deal locked up then we can start talking and it's got to be a decent price so step number one get the deal locked up step number two uh, i would probably do a hedge fund man skeleton what price do you have it locked up for love to know if not lock it up Depending on the market, you can make five to 10 from an on market deal. Depending on the market, you can make five to five million on a deal, right? So, Chris Beb says, Hey, Zach, I got a deal under, con under contract. Also, been posting. Uh, for buyers and no luck, it's foreigners wanting money for a list. Please help. Chris, you're not going to find your cash buyer on Facebook. Just being honest. Like, unless you actually go in the groups, like posting on Facebook is a waste of time. I even have in my group because people keep hammering for it. Do it. You ain't going to sell your deal on it though. Here's the thing. <laughs> your cash buyers, most of them are going to be from you calling and making relationships. Go call the four rents. Go to the Facebook. Chris, all right. All right, Chris, let, let, let me ask you a question. How many cash buyers sent you a proof of funds in the past seven days for that deal? How many? 
I'd love to know. If you've been in every Facebook group, I'd love to know. You're probably not. And how many cold emails did you send out? I'd love to know that. If you have it locked up, call the hedge funds in Chicago. Go to freelson.com show you to do the hedge funds. I'm telling everybody out here, don't post. Call the buyers, all right? That's it. Agreed. Facebook is a complete waste of time. Pull a 90-day cash buyer solid list. That's probably the best one for you to do. I would say I like cold calling the cash sales. Some people don't have the money for it, but still it works. Jaden says, hey, I found a land deal with the sellers. Nope, use your contract. Jonathan, what is up? Hey, Zach, been gone for a while due to personal uh, issues and ready to get back on. Any new laws? Uh, not really. Awesome. Thank you. Appreciate you. Andrew. Oh, what's going on, Zach? I'm blessed, man. How are you? Fantastic. I just had a quick question for you. Okay, so I have a deal under contract and I sent it to title three days ago. And um, you, I, Rick said that process usually takes seven to 10 days for it all to get, um, for it all to get finalized. But can I start marketing that deal even though I haven't gotten the, you know, confirmation from the title company? I know he, there's one lien on the house and he told me that and I told the title company and the contract says the seller will pay all the liens or yada, yada, yada. Yeah. Is it locked up? Yeah. Like I, yeah. it's with DocuSign and I sent the, he signed it, I signed it. And then I sent the contract to uh, the title company and they're just processing it right now. Do you have any EMD? Yeah. Yeah. I sent them the um, earnest money. And I had How to much? go all the way to, to the bank to do that. I can't do it over the phone for some reason. So, How much? Uh, 500. He was a... It's perfect. Yeah. That's good. I just want everyone to know examples of real deals. Yeah, start mm -hmm. marketing. Don't post the address or anything like that, but start getting good qualified cash buyers and start sending it over. All right. Appreciate it. That's all I needed. Thank you. Yeah, man. And uh, yeah, do that. Is the property vacant? Yes, it's vacant. It was a... It's not a, it's not a probate. The mother is still alive, but... She put the deed in the kid's name. So he has it and he just doesn't really, he doesn't want it. Do you have a lockbox on it? A lot. Um, I do not, no. So this is what we're going to do, all right? Is, how far is it from you? From, oh, I'm, I'm doing this virtually. I'm, I'm in Maryland right now. This is in Tennessee. Um, I'm trying to think here, man. How do you have access to the house? He said he lives five minutes from it. So he's just, and he's, he's uh, unemployed. So it, it's an older son. He's like 50. He's retired. Yeah, you're going to have to get, yeah, you're going to have to just find a good buyer. Find re two really good cash buyers. Okay. I mean, I pity you. Start marketing up. All right. Thank you. All right. Thank you. I love seeing that. Shout out to Andrew out here. He's getting action, taking deals, taking names, getting properties under contract. So shout out to him there. Uh, let's see. Who knows what to do after you put a vacant lot under contract? You find the buyer. Actually, go to the title first, then get a buyer from there. Pretty good, pretty good. Let's see here. Jesse says, me and a seller agreed on a price, and I've been waiting for his house pictures. It's already been two days. Should I just let it go? Uh, it was going to be my first deal. No, I still wait for the pictures. Is it virtual? Is it not? Give me some info on it. Love to uh, know. Let's see here. Um, Wayne County is a really good market. Yes. Lorraine Her Hernandez says, Zach, what's the 10 second pitch to, to give when a seller picks up the phone? Depends on what you're doing, right? So there, there's multiple ways to go around the quote unquote pitch for this. So number one, this is very important, right? Are you the owner of the house and you're looking to sell it, right? So it depends if they're calling you back, right? So if they're not calling you back, hey, my name's Zach. I'm looking to buy your house. I'm looking to buy properties in the area. Like use any of those two ones, right? That's the pitch. You're, you shouldn't be selling yourself to the person. Like you offering to buy it for cash should be selling enough because they should have the motivation. Kind of like what we talked about before when it comes down to the motivation part of it. It's very, very important that they have the motivation. And if you're just offering to buy the property for cash, it really shouldn't be that difficult for the motivated seller. So 
Yeah, that being said, it, it really shouldn't be a crazy complicated process. Um, let's see here. Um, let's see. Go in person. Yeah. What the price you ask? So is Kentucky and Ohio good market? Yeah, it depends where. I want to go to rural, rural of areas. Uh, but yeah, I, I think it shouldn't be that big of a deal. All right, let's get some more questions on here. Yeah, those buyers, really, if the buyer is jealous of you getting an assignment fee, don't deal with them, right? Like that is just a waste of your time. I, I wouldn't even, I probably wouldn't even care exactly what they have to say anymore because it's just, that's stupid. Don Zell says, hey, Zach, have you ever done deals in Fresno, California? Want to know how the process uh, went with any of the title companies? Um, I haven't done any deals. We've done some JV type deals, uh, but in Fresno, you just use a regular title company, same wholesaling process. Nothing really changes. Let's see here. Curtis says, Zach, do you want to buy a wholesale deal today? I'll be a cash buyer. I make, I got, I got to park my money somewhere. You know, I got to park my money somewhere. So I'm not too, uh, not too concerned. Yeah. <laughs> see here dude it's calling from it. <laughs> those airpods are weird you know franklin yo zach what's good homie dude, i'm blessed man what's up how are you uh good 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 um franklin. yeah can you hear me yo, yeah you got you got the youtube so uh what's can you take that off up? how are you oh, okay yeah, yeah let me do that all right, you got me? All right, there we go. Yep. All right, cool, cool. All right, so uh, you can help me out here. I, I, so I've been doing this for mm, about three years consecutively strong. I've had some good years. But uh, uh, so I'm in, I'm in the same area. I'm in Florida, South Florida, Miami. So uh, what I've been focusing on has been very niche. I've actually been focusing on uh, land. And that's all I've been doing literally for the past, for the past, you no, know, two, three years. And I've been, I've been decent at it. And I've always had like a, a like a safety net sort of say of, of buyers that I've been working with. But now with the market shifting and everything else, you know, I guess my biggest thing is, is having consistency. Uh, I've attempted to do, I guess, the, the scaling with the virtual stuff, but for whatever reason, I, I've, I've never had any luck with it. Um, I've been kind of just focusing more on qual quality, not quantity. Like if I would get a lead, like I would dissect the lead to its full capacity. Like I would find the, I would find the owner, the name, the name of the person on record. If I can't find them, I'll look for their aunties, their cousins, their mom or whatever the case is. And that's how I would generate my leads. And like I said, the thing is with me is especially maybe because of the land and I'm, I've only staying in the, the one market that I'm in, which is, which is South, South, um, East Florida. Um, so I guess what my, my main question for, for me ranting is like, wh what in my position, what would you do or what would you suggest to me to kind of just be able to scale a little more? Okay. Are you consistently doing land deals right now? Or is that something that stopped because of uh, the market? <clears throat> I've, I've actually been, been, been thinking about pivoting only because of the slowdown. Land deals or not? Say it again. You gotta be straight up with me so I can give you straight up advice. Are you consistently doing land deals right now? Yes, yes, yes. Okay. So don't stop that. And you're looking to scale that up, right? Yeah. Okay, so you are doing what part of Miami? Oh, should, doing I, all Miami? Or should I even pivot? Yeah, I do all, all of uh, Miami, um, Broward. Uh I've done one thing in Palm Beach, but majority of my my bread and butter has been in Miami. And like I said, I've 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 been, I've done really good at it, but you know, it's just now things are it's starting easy, to slow man. down. This is easy, dude. Let me ask you two really quick questions. What's up? How do you find the land deals? <laughs> Google map. Look, <laughs> go on Google map or go on the property appraisal website. See, look, search for vacant land and call the owners and see if they want to sell. How many vacant land deals have you done in Miami this year? Uh, 15. 15. Perfect. How do you find your top three buyers? Um, 
reverse, reverse the same way I find buyers. Is, I mean, the same way I find sellers, the same way I find buyers. Just see who's recently acquired in the area um, and uh, contact them. Okay. And how many hours a week do you think you're working doing this in Miami? <sighs> Honestly, I'd say maybe for the week. Yes. I'd say about maybe 15, 20. Okay. Well, <laughs> you can pump up the hours worked. So that's fine, right? So are you doing homestead at all? Uh, no, not, not really. Okay. So I'd add homestead. There's a lot of good. De- now you gotta be careful of that. Cause it's all like farmland and stuff like that, but there's yeah, some really yeah, good yeah. deals in homestead. Uh, so that's part of Miami, right? Yeah. yeah. Um, you're doing brown land over there, zone agriculture and uh, a lot of, a lot of developers from, yeah. from my experience with them. They don't really like to touch that be just because of the zoning purposes and whatnot. So honestly, what I would probably do is I would add, do what you're doing. Like, don't change what you're doing, okay? I'm not telling you to change because whatever you're doing is working, right? I would probably do South Palm Beach. So Boca, Boynton areas. There's a lot of development being done there. Have you gone north of 95 and, and gone by Boynton, like see all the developments? Not not, not purposefully. I've I've, yeah. I've stumbled across a couple of deals. Like I, I earlier this year, I did one in, uh, um, in Del Rey. And then at the end of last year, I did one in Palm Bay, but those I just fell on um, yeah. just only because somebody that I contacted in Miami and I said, yeah, I got a property up there that I'd be interested in selling. And I, I just so happened to sell that, but not, not, not purposefully. I mean, dude, I would probably just expand North. So I do South Palm beach. I think that's the best for you, what you're doing and then go up to, through Palm beach. Cause for land buyers, you need a bigger population. And then, I mean, you can do Port St. Lucie if you want, but those are really infill lots. Uh, yeah. And then I would probably do another metro. You got Orlando there, and then you can kind of do Fort Myers and then Tampa and then all that. Yeah. When, when I, tried to do, I tried to do uh, Cape Coral, like, uh, you know, pre-pandemic or during the pandemic. It, it was good for a while, but then, you know, it kind of got saturated, and especially with the, with, the, uh, with the market shifting. And I've noticed that um, – the prices that the prices that I could get the property for, those are the same prices that pretty much are on our market or even if not less. So, you know, I, I kind of stopped that. And plus the inventory over there, it's just a weird market. I know. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So I would probably do South Palm Beach that, and then just expand from there. South don't Palm stop Beach. what you're doing currently though in Miami. You so don't want to make less money. All right. So let me ask you this. Cause I know the biggest thing is with me too. Cause like I, I'm a one man show. Um, I'm a one man show. Like literally I, I, I've attempted to do the cold calling, but for whatever reason, like, you know, it's, it's, it never really caught on for me. So literally I, I dial all my numbers, you no know, single dials. You know, I don't, I don't, I don't, you know, and all, all my, all my leads come from, like I said, just come from me looking at the map, you know, individually picking out separate lands. So um, that's why I asked like, you know, is I guess I'm gonna ask you this: Is do you see from what I'm doing? Is 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 that a scalable thing? Yeah, dude. I think mean, using Google Maps a little weird, but um, yeah. so I just go to prop stream and pull the vacant lands and then skip trades and call them. That's probably gonna be a better one, okay. but that's up to you because then I can just it just makes it easier, right? But some people like you don't have to though, right? So like I would just pull a list. So like I'll just show you really quick. So like if I was gonna do. Palm Beach. I'll show you what I do. And I and like, to, like to your point, like with the skip tracing, because I know with land, sometimes with land, especially in this area, like Cape Coral is not like that, but like Miami and for a lot of them, majority right. of the land are 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 owned by companies or LLCs. And it's probably not a big company, it's just probably like somebody that purchased the land and they just just so happened to open up an LLC. So the skip tracing for that as far as uh, um going putting that through like a batch leads or something like that is a little harder. Because it's because you're you would have to skip trace a company and that company could have two three, two three people on there. Yeah. Um. So you gotta ex- investigate, right? Yeah. Yeah. So I just go here to. Do they have a specific land tab. Yeah, vacant lands right here. And so let's see how many they got here. Let it load up. And then yeah, we're just gonna go after the vacant land here. Looks like we got. 
21,000 pieces of vacant land. So let's take on market off. Uh, from your opinion, because you can reverse engineer those two if you really want. Is there a valuation where you don't deal with the vacant land, like a lot size? Um, like I said, I'm 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 kind of I'm kind of familiar with the Miami market. Um, I know with Miami, uh, you could build, and I've sold lots as small as twenty six hundred square feet, but that's only in that's only in a segregated pocket a pocket of Miami. Like you can't build anywhere else in Miami, but that specific area, which so happened to be. Uh, Liber- Liberty City Overtown area, but like I yeah. can't go to like Miami Gardens or North Miami, North Miami Beach, expecting to get a twenty six hundred square foot lot. So on average, the lot I would have to say the lot would have to be like five thousand square foot or bigger. But I'm talking about max. Oh no 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 no, no max. Well, you don't go to farmland. Well, I, I guess it's I guess I guess I guess so. It's two different things. Like the size wise, there's no limit. But usage wise, there is because I, I can't oh, yeah, do with Chicago culture. So like if it's if it's if it's you know twenty thousand square foot of commercial land, then I could do something with that, or even residential land. But if it's twenty thousand square foot of agriculture, then you know can't do nothing with it. Yeah, so uh, you can skip the agricultural and just make sure it's residential. So I can just go here on the let's see what part we're going here. We don't care about recreation. I mean. Yeah, we can do an industrial on there. That probably ain't going to pop anything up. Where's the... Re- you can do residential. So apartment, what it's zoned as. It should have the land on here. Where's the land? Zero lot land. Well, maybe not zero lot land because zero lot land, those are like um, townhomes. Yeah, you got buyers there, and then you can just okay. do the vacant land. So commercial, <clears throat> industrial, multifamily. Care about this? Because you, you get really specific on them, right? Private yeah. preserve, residential, and then you start adding all this stuff on here, right? Vacant land general is probably gonna be the big one, right? I don't care about under construction, right? You can just sort of filter it out a little more, right? Yeah, yeah, and, yeah. That's pretty much it. Like, I this is a big list, though, you know, man. So, like, yeah, I gotta yeah. bring that down. So, I don't really want to deal with anything worth more than five million. I, I that's my opinion. I don't think it's probably going to be the the best for vacant land if it's worth over five million. Do you agree, or do you think five million? <laughs> right. Uh, only, only if it's like commercial, and it depends on the area. Yeah. So I'd probably max it out at five million. Then you gotta list it like a thousand here. Yeah. And then. You could really get even crazier on it, right? So one thing also in the ownership, I don't want anybody owning more than 20 properties. Yeah, so That's kind yeah, of a bigger one. Oh, what did I just click here? Oh, my Lord. All right, wait. Let me just do, this, do it one more time. So let, let, let me ask you this in the meantime. Zach. So do you, do you think I should still focus on what's been working? Because I, like I said, I, yes. I, I was actually thinking, ah. thinking about pivoting to, to, to single families. You can, but I, don't stop what's working. Okay. So you're about 741 unique properties worth under 5 million. That's vacant land. And then they own, not years. They're, they're at 20 right there. I was going to add one more thing on here. Um, I think that's it. Make sure it's not on the market. You're at 732. That, that's decent, right? Yeah. It's always worth it to look at, right? So like this is in West Palm. This is like an info lot right here. Okay, yeah, that's 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 a good one, right? So like, that's what you do. Who owns? It's a corporation that owns it, though. Three yeah, generation cool. homes. So you can, if you really want, like this is now. This is most of these deals are going to be from corporations. Yeah, especially like, that's why I said, especially on this side, you see that a lot. But on the West Coast, yeah. which is Lehigh, Cape Coral, and all that stuff, a lot of those are owned by individuals. But over here. Like I would have to go to Sunbiz, um, look up look up who's who's the registered owners. It's probably about two, three, then skip trace each one of those individually. And I use I use been verified for, for my personal skip tracer. Yeah, but like I mean, even individual, there's half of them are individual, right? That's kind of cool too. Yeah. Um, and so that's all you gotta really do. So like I, I would don't stop what's working. Don't broke, don't 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 stop what's working. If it ain't broke, don't fix it. 
But if you want to expand from there, I'd probably just pull a more detailed list and then go from there. And then, and then cold call that list on top of what you're currently doing. Okay. Okay. And, uh, um, as far as, as far as you, you think I should try to, uh, try to go back into, you know, uh, getting a, a cold caller or a VA to, to do some of that stuff. Sure. If that's what you want, or maybe you can do it. Like depends what you want to do. I'm just, if you're doing it really well now, I, I wouldn't change it. I, I would personally have you cold call them. Uh, I guess so. I guess with that, because like, yes, I, I I do feel as if I do do it well on my own, but then at the same time, I feel as if like you know, it's kind of like a rat race. Like it, it requires me to to actually be be able to do some as far as like being able to kind of scale and step away. Like just like what you was explaining to the caller before you, where you was like, you know, you you get to a certain level where you could kind of replace yourself, and then so on and so forth. Yeah, but you gotta be at the point where you're doing that many deals, right? Okay. So yeah. like. Me doing over 20 deals a month, I can't do it myself, right? Imagine yeah, yeah, losing yeah. money if I do it all myself. One to two, I'd still do it all myself, right? Once you get to three, try to get to four to five, that's when you can start scaling up. Let's get to that point, dude. And then you can start scaling out. Okay. Right? Yeah. And that, that makes sense. Like, I, like to, to your point, I never really you thought about it. One extra deal, that. it'll pay for the VA. Do that, all right? Do Say that again? Do one to two extra deals from that Palm Beach list and then have that pay for the VA for next year. All right. All How right. about that? Good deal. All right, Appreciate man. We'll keep it up. Love seeing your stuff. Love seeing how you're doing deals. So uh, keep it up, bro. All right. Boom. All right. We'll get Jose real quick. Jose. Hey, Zach. Can you hear me? Yeah. What's up? Hey, sorry. I'm not in front of the camera. I'm trying to, but I'm holding a newborn. So I'm in a, <laughs> yeah. Let me see if I can. Beautiful. I don't know if you can see that. Yeah. So love it. My hair, it's my hair, little one crying. Hey, man. Thank you for uh, uh, picking me out real quick. So I'm a uh, end buyer. I am in Central Florida area. I got. I, I came across your YouTube channel because I got interested in finding deals. Uh, I've been depending on wholesalers for the last five, six years, but um, lately they got the wholesalers that I've been working with. The, their numbers are getting. They're not feasible for us right now. So either the ARV is, is way off or everything is off. So, so my question is, um, do you have any any wholesalers in my area? I know you guys are in Florida. I'm not quite sure what part that might be, you know, helpful for us. I'm trying to keep. I need to keep the crew what busy. Area? I am in Orlando, uh, like Osceola, Orange County, Polk County, Bro, if more you like Central Facebook? Florida. You go to all the Facebook groups for Central Florida and say, I have, let me get some good marketing for you. I have $500,000 ready to buy your wholesaling deals. Who's got deals for me? Perfect. Dude, perfect. You'll get all the wholesalers, man. I promise yeah, you. Yeah, man. <laughs> yeah. I've been reaching out to so many wholesalers and I'm, I'm getting, you know, a lot of, a lot of feedback, but the, the, the numbers are just way off, you know? So I know wholesalers are not all of them but you know you have a proof of funds? Good ones. how many properties yeah. have you bought in cash this year uh this year i've only bought in four and then everything else was just kind of holding stuff but like flipping was just four and okay I actually, i'm not gonna vouch for you but if anybody's watching this and you're in orlando make sure jose gives you a proof of funds absolutely yeah Jose's good with you making 100 grand on a deal if he's okay with the price yeah and last yep, but not least matter. he's going to use your title company Reach out to Jose. How does somebody reach out to you, Jose? Uh, if, if you don't mind, I can give my phone number out. I'm okay with sure. that. Uh, 407-360-0609. Cool. That's my, that's my personal side. They literally they can call me anytime. I'll send them proof of funds. That's fine. They can use that to send to the seller. It doesn't matter. We just want to um, – I just want to build a relationship with a good wholesaler just to keep my crew busy and keeps everybody busy and just to keep it moving. All right. Well, uh, go to YouTube and post it before I sign off here. Awesome. Make sure the new board's fine and <laughs> yeah. go Thank from you, there. But I want everybody to understand this. This is not vouching. Jose's the greatest cash buyer ever. You still got to get a proof of funds from him. Make sure he shows proof of the four deals he bought, which he should be able to. And yeah, he should yeah, be good indeed. to go. But I think it sounds good. So it's a good relationship. See what happens when you hop on. I love it. Yeah. Thank you, go Zach. I appreciate right it. Now. Post your number. And say, Jose, your name, and then go from there.
Yeah, I appreciate it, man. I know you got a, lar a large network, so that will help me leverage my time as well and, you know, and just start looking at more deals faster. All right, man. Put it in the comments, dude. Thank you, brother. I appreciate it. All right, give it up. We're going to wait for Jose to put his number in the comments so everybody in Orlando can have a new cash buyer. Make sure Jose still goes to the Facebook groups and does it, but for some other cash buyer, hop on here and winning wholesalers. So that's a cool little connection. Uh, so that's awesome. Hope we feed Jose some deals. So we'll have him posted on the comments, waiting for him there. And uh, we'll sign off here. But guys, I'm telling you guys, in wholesaling real estate, it's all about making offers, talking to cash buyers, and getting deals done. So make sure you lowball these sellers, get the good deals, and you can live the life of your dreams. So without further ado, I really appreciate it. And for Zeta, post, put his number in there. Oh, he put it in his uh, private chat. That's fine. I'll just post it on there. Put it in the comments for y'all. All right. You know what? Here, I'll post it on there. Boom. That's Jose's number. Y'all see it. All right. See you guys. Make sure you smash that like button. Subscribe. That's Jose's number. So go reach him out. Screenshot this. Five, four, three, two, one. See you all tomorrow with Rick. Have a blessed one.